Okay, welcome back beekeepers and future beekeepers. We're getting close to swarm season and that to everybody that's caught swarms means free bees. Uh, this is probably one of the first times you've actually seen my face without a veil. So uh, I know the joke about a face for radio. <laughs> so what we can do is get started. So this is basically disposable litter boxes. And you're pretty much going to decorate the inside what a bee would, you think a bee would like. <clears throat> so some of the key things you want to remember is the top and bottom, being the top bottom. And the two sides are going to be the front and back will have different areas on it that's going to dictate that. So <clears throat> on the back, what I like to do is cut a vent. We're going to do that with a knife. And this is just a vent. And I like to do it like this because what it's going to end up being is also going to be an awning. So there's the vent hole. I like to put a bee screen over it so the bees will use the bottom entrance. So what we're going to do is put a piece of screen over it. Put a hot glue gun that right over that hole that we just cut. You might have to hold it a few seconds. Watch that hot glue though. I'm sure anybody who's dealt with a hot glue gun has gotten the burns from the hot glue. But that's what you want. And the reason we put a vent up there like that is so the aroma from the inside, when this heats up in the daytime and the sun hits it, the entrance is going to be around here. So you're going to get that air coming in here, the hot air leaving in the back, that's going to equate to the aroma to attract the bees. So, the next thing you want to do is <clears throat> make sure you establish the top and bottom again because you're going to cut the entrance hole. And a lot of people have different, different ideas what size that hole will be. I've come up with approximately two square inches. I've read a few books on such things and there's quite a few different opinions. But, just like when you are, when you do have bees, you make too big of a hole, other things can get in there that you don't want in there. And like in your hive boxes, if you have an entrance reducer, <coughs> you don't want to make it wide open for the other items to get in there that you don't want. So, what we're going to do is we'll just cut a, I don't know, one by one by two. Some people say about two square inches. And if you do it like that, you end up with a landing board for them to come in on. So now this is definitely the bottom, and this is definitely the top. So, and that's what it's going to end up eventually look like mounted on a tree. So from here, we're going to start putting things on the inside. Now, you can use anything from tree branches, whatever, but you want to keep the 
items that you're going to make uh, available for them to build on towards the top. So you get a rough idea on here about how much you're going to cut this. And I just normally score it with a little knife. And you can use anything like tree branches, paint paddles. This is a little bit tougher than I would want it to be. Let me grab a coping saw. Paint paddles would be more uh, easier to cut. Set them in there sideways. Like I said, however they're going to fit. So you want to put one or two in there, and then one or two in the other one. So they can leave. So all we're going to do is put a little glue on that. A little bit of glue on this one here. Maybe set up one. A little bit sideways because nature don't have straight lines. I'm sure you all have heard that before. So, and we'll fix the bottom there too. So we got that side. Now these are going to go in there and go. That's a great place to put it. Put our cone. So, remember the top and bottom. So this is the bottom, where our entrance hole is. So then you're going to put this towards the top. And we're going to let that harden on there so they don't fall down once we hang this. The other thing you might want to do is with some more paint paddles. You just cut one that you can put straight up the back on the back of the box. And the reason we're doing that is we're going to have to hang this somewhere. So you want to give the box a little bit extra structure. Something like that. And then with that, we're going to want to Put a hole in there, two towards the bottom, two towards the top. Each person, watch your papers when you go through to end up poking the corner there. But uh, each person, I'm sure, is going to put their own little zip to this, you might say. And uh, I'd like to hear from all of y'all after you build them and hang them and all that when you catch a swarm. It'd be interesting if you put in the comments where you live or the region of the United States and uh, the date you call them because different areas, you know, with the temperatures and all that, the swarm season starts differently. So. Interesting to let our other people know when when all this is coming about. So you just want to run some wire through it like that, through that. And what you do is you just give it a little twist to keep it there. Now this is going to 
these are going to be annoying while you're doing the rest of this, but it's one of those things, you know. So you just hold that down there like that, put another piece of wire in there. And do the same to the top. Keep in mind, this is not something you're going to use year after year. This is something to get you started. Get your swarm trap up there. Catch your, catch your swarm. And this swarm trap, because I've seen swarms come and go, I've seen swarms happen and not even know they've happened, and start seeing uh, bees carrying pollen in there. And you know they're building, building inside, building their comb, and they're starting to have brood and so on and so forth. So they've already started the structure in there. So when you take this apart, it's going to basically be what's known as a cutout, unless you catch them that very day or that very evening. Within a day or so, they'll start building comb. So it's not that big of a deal if you fail to notice them and they start building comb because. What you're going to do is you're going to end up taking and putting the wiring all around here or zip ties or, you know, bread ties, whatever you have to fix this together. And then you want to remember you got to take this thing apart. You could also use those paper clamps. Yeah, those alligator clips that uh, <coughs> people put... large amounts of paper together, you know, the, the ones that kind of squeeze together, like springy. You could use those. And that's that's something you're all going to use your imagination, but the bottom line is you're going to fix these two together. Today I'm going to just use the wire. But before we do all that, we're going to do some more things to the inside. Now, I've had, an, I had another video on my channel called, I believe it's called, What to Do with the Goo. Now the goo is something called slum gum. If you look that up, that's uh, that's the old brood comb that people try to melt down and there's a little bit of wax in it, but there's a lot of goo. So, but that goo happens to be a, a smell that they like. So if you melt down the goo and you put it in here, it's gonna be, you know, put it on both sides. Remember where your top and bottom and all that is, but put it on both sides. And that's an attracting in, attractant in itself. There's also available on, on uh, different bee, bee sites and bee supply stores and so on and so forth. There's attract, uh, you know, uh, swarm attractants. You know, it's like a pheromone from the queen. One big thing I want to mention about that is too much is a problem. A lot of people go, oh, I don't see any bees. Well, it's because they're not swarming yet or something like that. It's not because you didn't put enough attractant in there. What will happen if you put too much attractant in there, the queen won't go in there because she thinks there's already a queen in there. And she don't want to have to go through a battle because she just left a home that was overcrowded and she's stressed out and so on and so forth and don't want to do, deal with all that. So they'll actually start building under the hive. If you've seen that, or they'll just go on to a next, another place. But if you see that, that's what you did. You tried too hard, basically. So remember, more is not always good. So maybe uh, a shot every week, uh, two weeks. Some people put the attractant on like a Q-tip. They throw it in the front hole. I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate the slum gum. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get all that set up. I'll be right back. So we're going to add some brood comb to the skillet. Stuff I've scraped from the hive frames. So. I was cleaning up, so try to get a piece out here so you can see it a little better. But that's the old comb, as you can see, it's just accordion because it's got scraped off but 
it's just the old brood comb and well, I've seen it pretty black but uh, it actually when when you melt it it actually smells like if you were to smell honey and while you're baking bread uh, you know so if you ever do this outside you'll probably attract some bees while you're doing it so we're going to go ahead and let that melt So it's not really going to ever get to be liquid <coughs> or much of liquid. So what you want to do is you just get a little bit on out. You can even use your paint stirrers for that. But just put it in there and get that clean and goo smell and stuff like that onto the back. And you can add some to where you put your Just get it to stick. That's all you need to do. And then after it dries, it'll stick real good. And after it cools off, I might say. So, and that creates a, a smell that they're familiar with. And this is known as chum gum. What to do with the goo. Go ahead and do both sides. That yellow that you're seeing is probably some leftover wax that is in there. So waxing combinations with or something like that. So we're gonna get this some in there. So you can create that, that smell that you're familiar with. And now we're going to just clean up the area so we can do the next, next step. Okay, we've got the insides of these things pretty much done. But we still got to remember what's top and bottom on both sides. <coughs> so, this is going to be the back. This is indicating the top. So we're just going to put the uh, turtle shell together, you might as well say. So now, you're going to go around the edges and mark it with matching locations. This all depends on the way you choose to do it. Because if you're going to use those binder clips that you can get in a stationary supply place, you're simply going to clamp them on there. I do two on the bottom, three on the sides. And like I said, you want matching lines on the lower part. I would not use something like a magic marker or something like that because you don't want those odors. Normally when you're dealing with something like this, pencil's pretty good. So, I got three on, three on the sides and two on the top. <coughs> and bottom. So, now if you're using, let's say, a, uh, the wire, you're going to want to poke holes in it. Watch your fingers again. Simply poke a hole in it. And make sure you do that. We lost something there. I don't know what it was. So, just make sure you got them lined up.
of them are just going to put some pieces of wire to weave through there the rest of it. <coughs> but this is where you can get creative yourself and come up with some ideas. If you do come up with ideas about how to put it together, the thing I wouldn't suggest is the glue and glue gun together because that will dry out and then sometimes we just peel apart and that thing will open up on you. So I'm going to cut several pieces of wire here. And that's longer than you actually need so you can trim them. You don't want to be fighting with some short pieces. But all you're going to do is basically put it through one side. Uh, leave it a little loose for now because you're still working with the other holes. So continue doing that. Do this if you're using just wire all the way around. We're going to use we're going to do several different methods just just to show you. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and tighten this up as so. And bring this around here so you can actually see what I'm doing. Like I said, there's no uh, right way or wrong way to do this. You're just putting it together. So, as my wife suggested earlier, these are called binder clamps. And we're going to just give them a little test run here. And personally, I think it's a pretty good idea. Look how easy that is. Not just pretty face. <laughs> so, that works real good. That, that, I like that a lot. So, then you could actually use what's called hog wings. That's those there. You can get them in a farm store. I'm going to grab my hog ring pliers and just show you how to do that. Pliers. And I guess you all can figure out why it's got, it's got their name, but that's all great. You can get them at, uh, actually you can get them at a hardware store, uh, your farm supply store, so on and so forth. But that's how simple that is. You see how that's it's used a lot in upholstery in cars also, but these are quite easy also. Like I said, you don't have to run out and get all these different things. You can use wire, you can use uh, the binders, binding clamps. Uh, those you get at an office supply place. Zip ties. Zip ties. Bread ties. Y'all will get creative on that one. But I actually kind of like the ease of the hog grain bumper. And they come in like a staple, like they're staples, but you might want to break them apart. And then you do it all the way back. And this 
just get one more in there. And the reason I like this over just about all of it is ease. The ability to use it is easy. Plus it's not easy. Good and remember, you're going to have to take this apart. So this would be the easiest way to get it back apart. So the other thing, and a lot of this stuff, like that slum gum earlier, if you don't have access to the brood comb to melt it down and so on and so forth, no worries. Just use the swarm attractant inside. Later on, when you have beehives and stuff like that, remember it's, you can use it uh, to make it smell natural in there. Uh, like I said, use what you have. This here is basically the whole thing. The next next thing I'm gonna suggest doing, and you really don't have to do that, is this is gonna be in the weather a little while. So it is, it will last for a little while, maybe a season, possibly two. But to give that a little bit better advantage of how long it's going to last, because I've had them last a season, and uh, you can add some, some wax. You can get this beeswax from a bee supply store, obviously online, or if you happen to have them bee supply store in your area. But, so remember with the top, this being the top, remember where we put the little vent thing? Right there. And that's so the aroma can come out. Just smear a little wax in there. And then this is the top, and this is where it might get rained on. And then you just put a little bit of wax. And this is something the bees are used to smelling. So this is an attractant also. So you put a little wax on the top, and as you're doing it, as you can see, it, it seals up the sides a little bit too. So as you all make these, don't forget to leave the comments on where and when you caught them. If there are any modifications you made, I like looking at those. But this is basically it. I'm going to stick a little bit of wax around in there. And we're going to try to get that to hold out like a, like a front porch for them. And hopefully we'll have some happy bees. Happy little bees. Decide that this is a location they want to choose. And one other thing you want to take note of is the, uh, when you see the bees, the scout bees, they'll actually, it won't be obvious, you know, that they're going up here measuring that this is two feet and this is so many inches, but they'll be buzzing around and you'll see them doing all kinds of little shapes and going out. Really don't want to mess with them until you actually see the swarm and that's something amazing in itself to see. The whole sky becomes pepper. They are very docile when that happens. Uh, I've stood in the middle of the swarm before and, and so on and so forth. Stand right next to them, poke them and so on and so forth. But the thing you want to remember is they're actually going in there measuring it. Measuring it for the size that's they're needed needing at the time. So they're they're going to take that back. There's other scout bees out there going to different locations and they go back to the hive and they have a consensus. So the uh, they you know, they basically are telling each other, "Hey, this is where that one is." And then, and so on and so forth. Go go look at mine and come back with what you think of mine and they all do that and they come back and somehow they all decide on one particular place to go to and the, the queen will actually lose weight so she can fly and there'll be a good portion of that colony they'll lay the, the, the original colony that they're leaving has a queen cell made and 
knowing that they're going to leave a daughter there. That's basically a daughter queen. So that's, that hive is going to survive. The mother queen, she's going to fly away and hopefully end up in your swarm trap. I'm going to show you in a few minutes from this video when I used this. And it was successful. Just remember the tips. <coughs> Too much of that swarm attractant is not an attractant. When you see them going in there with, uh, like, pollen and stuff like that, and they're, they're going in good, you, you pretty much have them, and you're going to wait till the evening so you make sure you have all of the colony, because they're probably out foraging at that time, so you want to get the foragers, so wait till the foragers are back, take that down and put it on, like, a, a big, big cloth with your your hive box. So you want to take and do a cutout. So you're going to open that up and then you're going to cut it out and you're going to shake those bees into your hive box. When you know you have the queen in that box, you'll actually see the other bees just walking across that cloth right into that hive box. You'll see bees out on the front porch of your hive, hive box with their tail in the air. Wings will be flapping to get the aroma of the queen to the other bees to say, hey, this is where the queen is. This is where our queen is. Let's all go in here. And you'll actually see them do the, the walk to the box, the queen walk. But uh, I wish all y'all a bunch of success. Like I said, uh, in the next clip here, I'm gonna show you how successful this box was. And as you can see, there's a swarm box, just like the one we constructed. This one here is from May of 2022. As you can see, it was successful with a swarm. It eventually became a cutout, meaning when I opened up the box, there was comb in there, took the comb, put on an open frame with rubber bands and put that into my hive box. I wanna thank you all for watching this video. Please leave some comments about your success with the swarm box, where and when. And please hit subscribe and like, and y'all have a great day.